if 9 is better than 380, then 40 is better than a 9. In this video, we're taking a look at the Taurus G2C in 40 Smith & Wesson. What's up everyone, welcome Squad Squad and welcome to Slav Guns. A few months ago we looked at the very popular and very affordable Taurus G2C in 9mm, a compact carry pistol that brings great features at a price most Americans can afford. One of the advantages that the Taurus G2C has over the competition is the capacity, bringing 12 rounds of ammo to what is typically a 10 round capacity frame. Taurus also makes the G2C in 40 Smith & Wesson. Despite looking exactly the same, this gun fires the more powerful, larger diameter bullet in the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge. Ordinarily, this would be a great time to make a joke uh, about 40 Smith & Wesson being also known as 40 short and weak, and probably something about how the gun is not fully ambidextrous and is not made for left-handed, aka wrong-handed people. But, apparently not everyone is a card-carrying member of the 10mm society, so we won't. In all seriousness, the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge is a terrific cartridge and probably the cartridge that I have the most brass and bullets for, considering it was the caliber with which I competed with until it hurt my wrist a couple of years ago. Considering that the gun looks and feels virtually identical to the 9mm version, which we previously looked at and discussed, if you need a refresher or a comprehensive look at the features, take a look at the video linked above. I think it's that side. In this video, let's take a quick overview of the features, put some rounds down range as I give you my shooting impressions and experiences with the gun, and then I'll give you the bottom line. This is a Taurus G2C a rebrand and an update of the original Taurus PT-111 or essentially a PT-111 G2. It's a compact pistol that is available in both 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson version calibers and a variety of colors and finishes. This is the 40 Smith & Wesson. The gun is identical in features with the 9mm, including the grip texturing, the trigger, the safety, the slide, and the magazine releases. The primary difference is going to be in the caliber and the capacity. While the Taurus G2C 9mm holds 12 rounds, the G2C 40 Smith & Wesson magazines have a 10 round capacity. Once again, take a look at the previous video linked above for a more in-depth look at the features. What I would basically say, one of the re things that I love about the gun is that it's gonna have a pretty nice loaded chamber indicator. It's gonna come out of the box with fairly nice adjustable sights. Um, the texturing on here is fantastic. It does have the scallop serrations on the side. The magazine release, the slide release, and the safety are all nicely sized. Once again, you do have to keep in mind that it is not ambidextrous. Um, to take it down, it's going to be fairly simple. It takes down just like a Glock. Take the magazine out, pull it back, press the two buttons, and you can just pull it right off. Put it back together the exact same way. All right, so let's load up some mags and take a look at how it shoots. All right. All right, so I painted the steel targets. Um, here, let's talk about this real quick. 
Um, one of the things that you're going to notice if you're used to shooting a lot of full-size guns is this gun only has rear serrations. So when you're manipulating it, you're grabbing there. You do have some scallops here that you can use, but it's not obviously as grippy as if there's actual serrations there. Um, something to keep in mind. Um, I do think that if there were serrations in there, it would possibly hang and catch on some of the holsters. Uh, once again, adjustable sights. I haven't adjusted these. These seem to be pretty good. Uh, the gun is primarily made for right-handers. So you have your safety and your uh, slide release. Both of these kind of like remind me, the slide release definitely feels kind of like on a SIG 226, right around that size. But both good, fairly easy to manipulate uh, in both cases. Um, trigger here, All right, so let's talk about the trigger. Once again, double strike. So let's talk about it in a standard function. Okay, so if you have the trigger let up, you do have a long take up. You get to a wall, fairly clean break. Um, probably right around like four and a half, five pounds it feels like. But take a look at the nine millimeter video. We talk about all the weights. Um, the reset it's okay, it's not short, but it's not long either. And then you're back at the wall. Um, literally, when it resets, you're right back at the wall. And there's no more take up. Um, so that's good. Now, the gun does have double straight capability, which once again, is, think of it as double action. Um, so if you pull the trigger and the gun doesn't go bang, you can let the trigger out all the way. You'll feel it reset. And then you have a slightly, well, you have a heavier pull and um, the striker resets and you're pulling a second shot. So it's almost, like it's a double, it's like a double single action, but with a striker. All right. Um, you do have a mount here for a light or a laser. And yes, I've tried a bayonet. Barely fits, but it fit. Um, Texturing, a little bit on the aggressive side, um, especially if you're shooting with like spear gold dots. Ugh, I felt that. Um, especially after it hurt my wrist, it was a little snappy. So we're shooting regular Remington uh, 180, 180 grain stuff today. So it'll be good. Uh, the only thing I would add on the trigger is you do have the dot, you have a dongle in there. The dongle does not reset in all the way. Um, so when you are shooting standard ammo, it's okay. Uh, but when you're shooting plus P, uh, like the spear gold dots or a lot of the defensive ammo, you will have energy transfer back into your finger through that dongle instead of the entire trigger because it looks at because it sticks out. All right, let's shoot. So from where I'm standing, uh, we're about 13 yards to the closest steel target. We have the two plates on, uh, on other side. One left field looks right around 15 to 17 yards. The one on the other side is look closer to 18. And then we have a large steel plate in the back, uh, which from where I'm standing right now is right around 30 yards. Uh, one of the things that I noticed, like I said, when you're putting it in, very easily it locks up, even on full 10 rounds. You don't have to look really force it in there. All right. Duh. <laughs> Double strike wasn't going to save you on that. All right, so you see like one, two, three, right on the left. So it's slightly left for me. that one all right um, recoil is not bad uh, one of the things that I quickly noticed after the one mag even though I have shorter hands the trigger on the reset 
it's like very close. The length of pull is quite small on that. So it's very easy for your finger to go in all the way on there. And then you're going to start pulling shots. And I kind of did that on one of the targets over there. Uh, but then again, this is like a compact gun and I'm shooting at 18 yards. So that's still not bad. Uh, one thing I will say is for the first, I have to play around with the grip on this, uh, but I do feel the recoil like right in this part, um, right around here. It started feeling a bit, yeah, right here. So if you have a really strong C-clamp grip on here, it's really not bad at all. Um, one of the things we didn't talk about yet, the mag release, quite effective. Um, it sticks out enough that you can find it, but it's not small enough that you're hunting for it. All right, let's try a weak hand. There you go. No limp wristing there. Awesome. All right, so let me actually, I'm gonna put in some footage of me shooting this with the gold dot plus P's. Um, and then we'll do the bottom line. G2C 40. All right, so I am out of like regular 40 ammo. So we're shooting spear gold dot plus P's out of this gun. Um, that'll be interesting. Um, now, I will say I've shot this before, this texturing. I know I've said that it's like, I find it just right with the gold dots. There's a matter of recoil on here. The texturing here does suck a little. Um, so that's why, partly why I'm wearing gloves. All right, so for this mag, let's go once again, two, 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 two. I will say with gloves, it's not bad. I originally requested the Taurus G2C 9mm and was quite surprised when filling out the paperwork at my FFL, I noticed that this was a 40 Smith & Wesson chambered gun instead. Interestingly, a friend of mine who had zero interest in the gun thinking it was a 9mm instantly perked up to find out it was chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. At the center of the CCW debate is going to be the choice of calibers. For the longest time, gun owners were choosing between having a carry-sized firearm in something like 380 ACP or carrying a full-size pistol in a larger caliber. More recently, we have seen manufacturers come out with compact and subcompact type guns chambered in 9mm. For some, however, it's still not enough of a caliber. And this draws back to the FBI's choice and recommendation of 40 Smith & Wesson. For most, however, the 40 Smith & Wesson caliber is just going to be a tad too snappy. What was most surprising to me is just how pleasant this gun is to shoot, even in the snappy 40. The recoil, while it may be more than a 380 ACP firearm, is generally more pleasant than what you find in a 380 pocket gun. If you haven't seen my previous video, this is a solid gun and the only reason it's not considered a $400 gun is the Taurus name. If your budget is $300 or less and you're a right-handed shooter, it's tough to go wrong with the Taurus G2C. The question is, in what caliber? If you can comfortably handle the 40, the Taurus G2C and 40 Smith & Wesson is a terrific choice. 
Versus 9mm, the 40 Smith & Wesson caliber is going to have about 25% more bullet energy and is surely a better defensive round, especially when using defensive bullets such as hollow points or expanding full metal jacket. Most of all, you're getting 10 rounds of 40 Smith & Wesson in the same size package that you generally will have 10 rounds of 9mm. Bottom line, just as I said in my previous video, for around $250 or less, this gun is a no-brainer. It's functional, it's comfortable, and it comes with Taurus's limited lifetime warranty. It's also going to give you above average capacity, either 10 rounds of 40 Smith & Wesson or 12 rounds of 9mm. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please make sure to click the like button and share the video with your friends. Make sure you're subscribed and have the notification bell on to stay up to date on our latest videos, be it about the Taurus GTC, other modern handguns, or if you're a fan of our series on precision rifles, and probably some new calibers that are just about to come out. And if you're watching this in the month of June 2020 and you want more entries into our Sturka S3 giveaway, use the code GRABTHEBULL with spaces or without. Both will work. <laughs> so there you go. As always, thank you for watching. Keep on squatting, and I'll see you next time.